Are you looking forward to new colors in your temperature blanket? The month of May is deep in the spring season, which means temperatures are changing, and we are seeing a lot of changes happening in our temperature blanket with the colors. Which color are you looking forward to seeing the most? For me, I'm looking forward to seeing this blush pink color that falls in my 90 degree range. One, I like warmer weather. And two, I really think this blush pink color will look really nice with my already established rose. My Crochet Club members voted and the winning crochet stitch for the month of May is going to be the basket weave crochet stitch. If you would like more information on being a Crochet Club member, I would love for you to check out my website, crochetwithtiffany.com, under members, and check out the 10-day free trial where you can join a couple of my all-inclusive live streams where I can see you, I can hear you, and we can interact with each other. There's also forums dedicated to the temperature blanket where you can post your own pictures and you can ask questions, and those pictures are really helpful when questions come along. The community is so amazing, and I really hope that you would give it a try. Okay, I'll be honest, when it comes to the basket weave crochet stitch, it was one of my favorite stitches that I selected for this entire project. Oh, I'm so looking forward to it. However, when I was practicing working stitches together to see how they would work with each other, I did not practice putting the basket weave stitch on top of the linen stitch. So we will have to finagle things a little bit for row one of the basket weave stitch to make it work, but we'll be fine moving forward. It'll be all good. The May Crochet stitch slash calendar is already up on my website, crochetwithtiffany.com, under the crochet along tab, under May. Click on that and the card is ready for you to print out for free. It has the calendar, it has this crochet stitch, all good for you to go. Circle all the days that you're accounting for for our project. We've done it uh, January through April, so hopefully you're kind of in verse, you know what to do when it comes to which days you're circling and you're good to go. If you're hearing about this project for the very first time and would like to get started, ah, I, I'm so excited for you to get started. It's never too late to join. Definitely go to my crochetwithtiffany.com website, click on the crochet along tab. I have all the stitch cards January through May. We haven't gone past May yet. Print them all out. I also have a playlist on my YouTube channel where you can see all of the temperature blanket videos that I've created so far, including before January, there is a introductory video where I go through which colors I'm using, the brands that I'm using, and just kind of setting up before you get started with your temperature blanket. So check that out, get caught up with us, that way you're right there along with us moving forward through the year. Just a heads up, the basket weave crochet stitch does go back to the original crochet stitch count, multiple stitch count of our rows that we had in the beginning. So we will now go back to 192 stitches per row with the basket weave stitch, working with a size four weight yarn. If you're working with a size five weight yarn, we're gonna go back to 132 stitches per row with that. I'll be adding a stitch in row one for the basket weave crochet stitch to make everything align and work well. Just wanted to let you know that we are going to be changing that stitch count going up a stitch again. The basket weave crochet stitch also has a four row repeat. So looking at our calendar, the month of May, perfect for the size four weight yarn. There's going to be 16 days that we have circled on our calendar. 16 is divisible by four. So we're gonna hit a th or three repeats of this basket weave stitch for the entire month of May. If you're working with a size five weight yarn, we wanna stop after the fourth week in May. So May has five weeks. If we're making two rows per week with the size five weight yarn, we wanna stop after four rows because eight is divisible by four, 10 is not. So we'll just put that last week in May and add that to June so that way we can have a really clean basket weave project or basket weave pattern going on in our blanket. If you don't care and you wanna continue with that half repeat, go for it. I'm just letting you know what I'm going to do with my size five weight blanket. All right, let's go ahead and dive in and get started. I have multiple colors here that I'm going to use for my demo so that way you can see the difference between each row that I do. Pretending that we are adding a new color because maybe the temperature was different this day, we're going to slip stitch in that first stitch space just to attach the new yarn, the new color. Great, we're gonna start by chaining two. One, 
two. Now this chain two does actually count as our first double crochet stitch and takes that first stitch space. Next, we're going to make a front post double crochet stitch around the next three stitch spaces. Now, because we have chains here, I'm just going to basically double crochet around the chain, double crochet around the chain, then front post double crochet around that single crochet, and double crochet around the next chain. This is the way we are finagling row one. <laughs> Next would be three back post double crochet stitches. So we're going to back post double crochet around the first single crochet stitch. Regular double crochet around that chain one. And back post double crochet around that next single crochet stitch. The repeat pattern for row one is going to be three front post double crochets, then three back post double crochets, three front post double crochets, three back post double crochets, all the way to the very end. If you are not familiar with post stitches, let me go ahead and work that. So next would be three front posts. So I'm just gonna do a regular double crochet around that chain. Front post would be yarn over, finding that single crochet stitch, inserting my crochet hook to the side of that stitch, going behind that stitch, pop popping out the other side, yarn over, pull through, then yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, then regular double crochet over the chain, back post double crochet will be yarn over, taking my crochet hook, single crochet stitch, coming out from the back to the front of that single crochet stitch, pushing it backwards, and the other side, then yarn over, pull it through, so it looks sort of like you're flossing in front of that single crochet stitch, and then yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Okay, I think you have everything that you need to move forward with this row. I'll meet you at the end to show you what we do next. Regular double crochet, and you'll notice there's only one stitch space at the very end of row one. What we're gonna do in this stitch space to make the basket weave crochet stitch work is first we're going to back post double crochet around the stitch. Back post double crochet. And then we're going to make a regular double crochet stitch into the top of that same stitch regular double crochet. So technically two stitches in the last stitch space, a back post and a regular double crochet. All right, that's the end of row one. I'm going to go ahead and cut off my work. Again, pretending I'm working it up like I would normally for my blanket. Generally, uh, I don't often see two days in a row where it's the same color and I can just carry it on. If you can, that's awesome. What I would do is I would just go ahead and chain two to move on to row two. Okay, row two, attaching new color, slip stitching to the top of that first stitch to attach my new color, and then chain two. Again, that chain two is going to count as my first double crochet stitch for this row, so I will not place any other stitch in that first stitch space. For row two, we are really going to refer a lot to row one and just continuing that post stitch upward. So whatever we see from row one is what we will repeat. Below, I see what looks like a front post double crochet. So I'm going to make a front post double crochet around that post stitch. And continue making three front post double crochets. Two. Next, I see three back post double crochets. So I will make three back post double crochets. One, two, 
three. Great. Now that we have these stitches already established off of row one, it's so much easier to work these post stitches. That's the repeat pattern for row two, guys. We're just going to repeat three front post double crochets, then three back post double crochets all the way to the very end. I'll meet you at the end of row two to show you what we do differently for row three. And we will end by making one double crochet stitch on top of that first double crochet stitch there to close off our round. That's round two. Now let's move on to round three. Begin by chaining two. One, two. Now when we look at this row below, the stitches below, we want to do the opposite of what we see. So skipping that first stitch space because the chain two counts as our first double crochet, I see front post double crochet stitches here. So I'm going to make one back post double crochet around the next three stitches. So back post, one, two, three, Next three stitches, I see back posts, so I want to do the opposite and make three front post double crochets. One, two, three, and that's the new repeat pattern for row three. Just look at the stitches below and do the opposite three and double crochet in the last stitch space, which also happens to be the second chain of that turning chain. There we go. There is row three. Cutting our yarn, tying off. Last row of the repeat is row four. For row four, we are basically just going to be continuing what we did with row three, elongating those stitches. So starting with a chain two, seeing what stitches we had in row three and continuing that stitch. So it looks like a back post double crochet. So I will continue to make that back post double crochet stitch. One, two, three, and then it looks like three front post double crochet stitches. So I will continue that making three front post double crochet stitches. One, two, three. It's actually the even number rows that will literally just continue to elongate what we did in the odd number rows. So for example, we made row one and then row two just continued those stitches to elongate them. Then we made row three, which switched everything up and did everything opposite. And row four will continue to elongate those stitches. So whenever you hit an odd number row, you're flip-flopping or doing the reverse. Every even number row, just continuing to elongate that stitch. Last stitch, double crochet in that second chain to close off the row. And this is what we will be looking at. It's a little difficult to see the basket weave with so many changing colors. It'll be a lot easier to see with some of the colors staying more consistent, but it's beautiful. It's so much fun. And I love, love, love the look of it. And I think it'll complement the blanket that we are doing so well. All right guys, so what did you think of the basket weave crochet stitch pattern for the month of May? I am so excited about it. I think this month is going to fly by and we're just gonna have the best time doing it. Thank you so much for joining along with me. Thank you for sticking out this blanket as long as you have. I hope you have the best day and I'll see you soon. Bye guys. <laughs>